Number 3. Pinal Air Park Located in southern Arizona, Pinal Air Park is the world's largest commercial aircraft storage facility. Built in 1942 as an Army airfield, it was used extensively by the military throughout the Second World War. During the Vietnam War, it served as the headquarters for the CIA's air operations, including clandestine missions that were carried out under the agency's front company, Intermountain Airlines. Vehicles rust a lot slower in the dry desert climate than they do in almost any other environment, making Pinal Air Park an ideal place for storing the hundreds of retired commercial and military aircraft that are parked there. Many of the planes have been there for a long time, including several decommissioned Boeing 747s. Famous for its humped fuselage, the 747 was the original jumbo jet. Introduced in 1970 under the now-defunct Pan Am Airways, the iconic bi-level aircraft was developed at a time when air travel was becoming more popular and airports were becoming overcrowded. Airlines were looking for ways to reduce congestion and operating costs so they could lower ticket prices and attract more customers. In a stark contrast to how some modern airlines seem to operate, Pan Am officials believed that making flying cheaper for consumers was a good business move. They sought to do this by spreading the cost across more passengers by designing a bigger jet that could hold more people. Boeing had to design an inevitably complicated machine unlike anything that had ever flown before on a tight time frame and limited budget. Many joked about how management had bet the company by taking on the task, but it proved to be worth the gamble, sparking a revolutionary new era in aviation that turned flying into a common way to travel rather than a luxury reserved for the affluent. The 747 remains one of the most successful passenger planes of all time to this day. Like any other aircraft, it was eventually superseded by newer, more advanced, more fuel-efficient and, in some cases, larger planes. The last 747 to operate under a U.S. airline flew from Seoul to Detroit for Delta on December 19, 2017. Two weeks later, it touched down at Pinal Airport with no foreseeable plans to return to the sky. Pinal Air Park is also home to some Boeing 737 MAX jets that arrived at Pinal Park when many jurisdictions throughout the world banned the aircraft due to safety concerns. Aviation authorities began grounding the plane in 2019 after 346 people died in two major crashes, sparking fears about a possible design or manufacturing flaw. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration was one of the last agencies to ban the 737 MAX. By the time American authorities finally decided to ground the aircraft, 51 other regulators had beaten them to it. As it turned out, the 737 MAX did have a major malfunction with a flight control feature called Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation Systems MCAS. It was implemented to balance out the plane, which had bigger engines that were positioned differently than they were on past 737 models. This gave the MAX a tendency to pitch up excessively, putting it at risk of stalling. MCAS corrected the issue by automatically adjusting the horizontal stabilizer and keeping the aircraft level. The FAA allowed Boeing to remove any mention of the MCAS from the aircraft's manual, leaving pilots completely unaware that it was part of the system. The two major accidents that sparked worldwide concerns about the 737 MAX were caused by an MCAS malfunction. But without knowing about it, the pilots couldn't take the proper steps to resolve the issue. Boeing fixed the problem and the 737 MAX is back in service, which means that the fleets at Pinal Park will most likely leave soon if they haven't already. The Boneyard's plane population increased dramatically when COVID-19 reduced airline operations to a fraction of their pre-pandemic levels, filling the property with rows upon rows of jets bearing famous airline logos like Delta, JetBlue, WestJet, Air Canada, and more. Unfortunately, many of these planes will never retake the skies. The drastic reduction in flight travel that came with the pandemic left airlines scrambling to cut costs wherever possible. And even as the demand for flight travel goes back up, most companies are in too much of a pinch to fly any more planes than they absolutely need. Have you ever flown in a jet? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 2. Davis Monthan The world's largest aircraft boneyard is just outside Tucson, Arizona at the Davis Monthan Air Force Base. It was established in 1925 and quickly became the largest municipal airport in the United States. The property gained its official military status shortly before the U.S. entered World War II, when it was used by the Army Air Forces for heavy bomber operations and training. Virtually all activity at the base stopped when the war ended, and it soon became a storage space for disused military aircraft. But it didn't become the country's primary military aircraft boneyard until 1964, when around 1,000 Navy planes arrived at the property. Officially known today as the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Center, the sprawling 1,200-acre site is home to around 4,400 decommissioned aircraft, where the arid climate helps to preserve them for possible future use. Its population peaked at nearly 6,100 in 1973, coinciding with the end stages of the Vietnam War. 
Today, there are around 80 different types of aircraft at Davis Monthan, and many have been there for years or even decades. Their cumulative value is estimated at around $31 billion. One of the older collections consists of a fleet of retired B-52 Stratofortress bombers that have had their wings removed. This was done as part of a strategic arms limitation treaty between the U.S. and the Soviet Union as a way for Soviet satellites to see that America had lived up to its end of the deal and took the war machines out of service as promised. There are also plenty of other B-52s whose wings are still attached. Only two of the Stratofortresses at Davis Monthan have returned to flying, most recently with the resurrection of a B-52 nicknamed the Wise Guy. After being retired in 2008, it was slated to eventually be cannibalized since most B-52s never fly again after being taken out of service. But its future changed when the Air Force Base in Guam lost one of its B-52s to a fire and needed a replacement. Some of the fighter jets at the Boneyard, including the F-4 Phantom II and the F-16, are being converted into aerial target drones. Additionally, the base is home to several four-engine turboprop Lockheed C-130 Hercules transport aircraft, the nearly 250-foot-long Lockheed C-5 Galaxy, the Lockheed P-3 Orion anti-submarine and maritime surveillance naval aircraft, and more. It may seem like many of the aircraft are going to waste, but most will eventually either be recycled for their parts or brought back to life. Every plane that arrives at Davis Monthan is drained of its fuel, then its fuel tank and lines are flushed out with a light oil to keep them lubricated. This happens at what's known as the Flush Farm, where up to six aircraft are serviced daily. Small openings are covered with tape, and the aircraft is thoroughly cleaned and sprayed with several coats of easily removable paint to keep it as cool as possible and protect it from the harsh desert sun. Any jet that's served on an aircraft carrier is washed to prevent sea salt corrosion, and all explosive devices are removed. Planes that still have their wings are secured to the ground with cables to ensure that they'll remain in place during high winds. Around 700 workers at Davis Monthan oversee the massive collection of planes. They work to properly prepare them for storage, maintain them while they're there, and restore them back to airworthy status if and when the time comes. Some of the surplus machines at the site are outfitted to fight forest fires or provide some other crucial service in a non-military capacity, while others find new life with the militaries of American allies. In 2019, for example, the Multinational Aviation Special Project Office, MASPO, and the Office of Defense Cooperation, ODC Greece, requested help with making six Bell OH-58D Kiowa Warrior helicopters fully mission-capable, FMC. Seventy were pulled from storage at Davis Monthan, and in addition to the six that were made FMC, the remaining four were prepared as maintenance trainers. They were shipped to Greece along with the 60 other non-flyable aircraft. Just as fast as aircraft are leaving the boneyard, others are arriving. In late 2021, just a few months after U.S. forces withdrew from Afghanistan, two dozen helicopters that had served under the now-defunct Afghan Air Force came to Davis Monthan. Included among them were seven Soviet-designed Mi-17s and 17 American-made MD-530F Little Bird armed light helicopters. Even the vehicles that never re-enter service play a valuable role in the boneyard's operations. Every year, thousands of parts are reclaimed, saving hundreds of millions in taxpayer costs. The inventory is especially helpful when it comes to finding parts of older aircrafts. In many cases, Davis Monthan is the only place in the world that has what someone is looking for. And while no job is necessarily too big or too small, obtaining the correct materials can take anywhere from hours to months. Once a plane has been completely harvested of its usable parts, it gets cut up and crushed. Staff members often try to identify and reach out to the last service member who flew the aircraft and invite them to the base to say their final goodbyes. It's an emotional experience for the pilots, who often get choked up as they watch what's left of the machine get destroyed. Number 1. Alice Springs Boneyard The world's newest aircraft boneyard is in the remote town of Alice Springs in Australia's Northern Territory. Like several other famous aircraft storage facilities that are in the middle of the desert, it was chosen for its dry climate, which helps to slow down the rusting process. As the first commercial aircraft storage and recycling facility in the Asia-Pacific region, it caters largely to major airlines based throughout the region including Qantas, Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines, and Virgin Australia. Officially known as Asia-Pacific Aircraft Storage APAS, the sprawling property can accommodate almost any kind of aircraft, including the massive Airbus A380, which at nearly 240 feet long and weighing around 560 tons is the biggest passenger jet ever built. In terms of aircraft life expectancy, the A380 is very young. It was introduced in 2007, making it easy to wonder why anyone would worry about needing to store or scrap one quite yet. But several of the super jumbo jets have already been retired or suspended from service, and several of them have ended up at Alice Springs. There's no denying that the colossal double-decker is an impressive engineering feat, but the A380 is typically limited to long-haul flights that are in high demand. 
The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic drove the need for the jumbo jet down even more, and in 2021, Airbus stopped producing the A380. Several of the aircraft wound up at the boneyard during the pandemic, and more are likely to appear. Commercial flying isn't expected to return to its pre-pandemic levels until at least 2024, and the need for such a massive plane still remains limited. The A380 isn't necessarily doomed quite yet. In 2021, two of the jets being stored at Alice Springs re-entered service under Singapore Airlines, but the pandemic has certainly expanded the aircraft's ongoing presence at the Boneyard. Other planes also found their way to Alice Springs as life in lockdown put the brakes on air travel. In fact, the Boneyard actually ran out of space, forcing its owners to expand in order to accommodate the continued influx of suspended aircraft. The growing collection of billions of dollars worth of aircraft includes numerous Boeing 777s. First developed during the mid-1990s, the 777 is the world's largest twin jet, measuring 209 feet long with a wingspan of 200 feet. As a long-range jet, it has a carrying capacity of over 300 passengers. Just like with the A380, the reduction in travel that came along with the pandemic saw numerous 777s grounded at Alice Springs, including several that operated under Cathay Pacific. But COVID-19 isn't the only reason that the aircraft has been spending more time on the ground than in the skies. In recent years, several 777 engine coverings broke apart in mid-air, leading some airlines to ground their entire fleet until the problem gets resolved. A lot of work goes into overseeing a boneyard. Contrary to what it may seem like, storing a plane doesn't involve simply parking it and forgetting about it. Even as commercial flying virtually ground to a halt, the aircraft that are no longer being used but may re-enter service in the future need to be stored properly and maintained so that they remain airworthy. The fact that many, if not most of the planes at Alice Springs are being cared for in this manner, rather than scrapped, is a hopeful sign that the flying industry will recover to its former pre-pandemic glory. But only time will tell what the future holds. Thanks for watching. Did you ever travel by plane at the height of the pandemic? Tell us about your experience in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.